Hello and welcome back to Break Your Budget, the podcast. My name is Michaela and I am your host and we are back today with another podcast episode, obviously, per usual. The theme of today is going to be side hustles, balancing a nine to five, my experience, my tips, and I'm going to give you guys or I'm not gonna give you guys, I'm gonna answer some questions at the end of this. Um, I submitted a question box on my Instagram stories a couple of days ago, I have it up on my phone, so I will be doing that at the end, all about like side hustles and such. So it's gonna be a good episode. I feel like I get asked a lot about how to figure out what side hustle is right for you, and we're gonna go through, I guess, some steps on how to like think about it and approach it. It's definitely one of those things that is a little bit harder to figure out and takes some time. And there are a lot of factors I think that dictate how to choose a side hustle and what side hustle is gonna be the best for you and your lifestyle and all of those things. So we're gonna get into it. First things first, if you like this podcast, please, please, please make sure to go leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. I've said this and I think every single podcast episode that I have put out, but I'm trying to make my podcast a thing. I'm taking it very seriously in 2022. I have put up an episode every single week and we're going strong. I'm still in the process of rebranding my podcast. So I've been working with a graphic designer and she has helped me put together a really nice graphic, I guess, for my new podcast. Um, it's gonna be kind of the same. It's just gonna have a new name and hopefully be a little bit more cohesive, but I'm not gonna make any promises. I really just wanna have a new name and like make my podcast look a little bit better from the outside. Ultimately, my goal is to sign with the podcast network this year, TBD, if that actually happens, but we're putting it out there. And if you guys leave me a review and listen to the podcast, that will help me a lot as well and also help me bring you better content. So that's that. I don't honestly think that I have too many updates. I think this week, or at least within the last couple of weeks, one thing that I think is actually valuable for me to share is... So last week I turned 27 at the time that I'm recording this. It'll be two weeks by the time this actually goes up. And I decided that my 27th year, the theme is going to be my year of yes. So something that I'm trying to do now that I've lived in LA for almost a year, I'm definitely settled. I have friends. I'm feeling good. Um, is to start saying yes to more things. I just feel like for a while especially when I first moved here for the first couple of months, like I was dealing with so much from working my job to break your budget was like really starting to pop off. I was just really busy. And then I was also trying to make friends and like there was a lot going on. I wasn't definitely like feeling my best. I think I was doing well from obje an objective standpoint, but Looking back, I think mentally I was like very burnt out and now I've definitely found a little bit more balance in my life and I really just want to start experiencing things. I feel like 27 is going to be a really great year for me. I'm setting a lot of really good intentions and part of that is learning how to say yes to stuff and not like pigeonholing myself at home and in my work. Obviously my work is very important. It's how I make money, but I just want to be able to do things like I really want to experience my life a little bit more and I live in this amazing place and I finally feel like very financially secure and that I can afford things and not have to stress and I want to lean into that while I can while I'm young and while I'm living in this really fun place and don't have any other like responsibilities and stuff so that is my theme I guess for my 27th year and it kind of stems off of my theme for 2022 so I saw early on in the year, so like back in January, I saw this TikTok video of a girl and she says that every year she gives every year like a word and her word for this year was her socialite year and she was really trying to make it a very social year and I, that really inspired me and I was like, okay, so 2022 is going to be my socialite year and I'm going to lean into a lot of social stuff and I think I've done that for sure for the first couple of months too. I've said yes to a lot more things but now... I, it's the summertime, it's my birthday season, like we're saying yes to stuff. And so for the past couple of weeks, I've spent a lot of money and I've had a lot of plans and I feel really great about it, truthfully. I don't feel 
nervous or worried about my finances. I don't have the same anxiety I think that I used to. And I think that's a really important growth to share that sometimes spending money and getting comfortable spending money takes time. And it's taken me a long time to really like abide by the concept of living my life outside of the spreadsheet. And I think I'm getting there. That was a lesson. So in last week's podcast episode, if you've listened to it, if you haven't, you should. But one of the lessons I talked about from Ramit Sethi's book was living life outside of the spreadsheet and really remembering that money is a tool and our lives are supposed to be lived. So that is really, I guess, the theme of the next year of my life. Um, and yeah, I have been living by it so far. I've had plans pretty much every night for the past week and I'm really enjoying it. So we'll see if I can maintain this social life, I guess, for an extended period of time. But for now, I'm having a good time. I really enjoy hanging out with my friends and getting out of my apartment and stuff. That's another thing too that I've been doing is really making an effort multiple days of the week to work outside of my apartment. So the at the time that I'm recording this, it's actually Thursday, July 14th. And every single day this week, I've left my apartment and worked from a coffee shop, um, except for today because today I'm doing all my filming. But I really, really like leaving the house. I love being in a different environment. I love sitting somewhere else. I love going out for coffee. And so I'm going to be trying to do that. I've said this before that I would try to do it like one or two days a week and I didn't practice it at all, but now I'm going like three, four times a week and I'm spending a lot of money on coffee, but life is short. It's making me feel good for now and I'm sure at some point I'm not going to want to keep doing that, but for now I really like it. I like being around people. Um, I find, again, at least more recently, that being home in my apartment by myself, like with my roommate being gone, or if she's like out or whatever, and I'm home alone for a long period of time, I find myself getting kind of sad and like, I don't want that. So leaving the house to work and to like, just get out has been feeling really good. So that's another thing that I guess I wanted to share is you're gonna go through seasons where you wanna be alone and you're gonna go through seasons where you wanna be surrounded by people. And I think it's important to kind of lean into those things as they come and to not always worry about the financial aspect. Obviously the money piece is important. Like, is it really sustainable for me to spend, I don't know, probably like a hundred or $200 a month on coffee? No, but occasionally once a, once a year or like if I have a month where that happens, I'm going to be okay. And I think that is really the lesson is that every month in every kind of season of your life is gonna look different. And that's okay. You just kind of have to lean into it and let it happen and know that you're gonna even out over time and it's fine. So that is my little intro piece for today. And now I guess we'll get into the meat of this episode. So I've got some notes on my computer and I've phased this out into two, into actually three phases. So first is like figuring out your side hustle and figuring out, or we're going to go through steps on how to figure out how you can figure out your side hustle. Um, phase two is going to be how to balance a side hustle with a nine to five job, because I know that that's a reality for most people out there. Um, and it was my reality for almost three years. And then the last phase is, um, deciding when it's time to leave a job to pursue your side hustle. And then like a bonus phase is going to be Q and A. So with that, let's get right into it. So first things first, I think it's really important to keep in mind here that having a side hustle is a choice. That being said, for a lot of people, I feel like they've become almost a ne almost a necessity given like the economy and the state of the world that we are currently living in and have been living in for what feels like ever, um, literally years at this point since the pandemic started, it feels like we've entered an alternate universe. Um, but basically side hustles have become very popular. And I think if you are on social media at all, whether it's TikTok or Instagram, you've probably started to notice this trend of people wanting to become influencers or thinking that, you know, if you, you know, become an influencer or have an online presence, you're just automatically going to make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and become super rich. And as a result, it's become very, very popular to have a side hustle or to look 
for a side hustle, um, become an influencer or build a social media presence if you don't want to be an influencer or do UGC content or whatever. Like that seems to be the theme of a lot of the content that I see related to side hustles on Instagram and TikTok. Um, I think, you know, side hustles are obviously very, very beneficial and you know, outside of generating a lot of additional income or helping to increase your income, having a side hustle can also help you like find passion in your life with that, which I think is really important, but it can also help you figure out and hone and develop different skills. So an example is myself. I, you know, have always worked these very analytical number finance heavy kinds of jobs where I spend a lot of time in Excel I don't get to do or I didn't get to do a lot of creative work and so I you know I created this identity for myself that I was not a creative person and that I was a numbers person and I just associated myself with like math and numbers and finance and money and while that's you know good and fine I have so many other dimensions of my personality and so many other skills that just I never got the chance to pay attention to by nature of the career path that I chose. And so well, Break Your Budget was kind of born as almost like an outlet for me to share tips and knowledge that I had as well as decisions I was making with my money and all of that. It also was an opportunity for me to sort of lean into this creative side of myself that I almost didn't even know existed. And now there are so many different hats that I wear that are beyond just like the number crunching finance version of myself. Like I am a writer. I am a creative. I am an influencer by definition, I guess. Like there are so many things now that I do that I never would have been able to like explore or realize that I even liked if I didn't ever start my own side hustle. And so I think that's a huge benefit is like, I guess if you're not happy in your job or if you feel unfulfilled in your job, starting a side hustle can help you discover new things about yourself that you didn't know and ultimately develop new skills that A, you could use in your job, but B, that you could also use to leverage and create a new career path for yourself. And I think that that's a very powerful thing. So having a side hustle, so many benefits, but I think those are kind of the main ones. But ultimately to figure out like what side hustle is right for you depends on a lot of different factors and we're going to dive into them. I think a lot of people associate a side hustle with starting like a social media business and well, that's obviously I think the side hustle that's kind of in your face most of the time, it's definitely not the only thing that you can do to make money or to make additional income or to start a business. I also think it's important to differentiate that a side hustle doesn't necessarily mean that you're starting a business or you're starting a social media page or you're creating content. A side hustle could be a part-time job. It could also be a couple hours of extra work that you do in a variety of different capacities. It doesn't have to be a business. It doesn't have to be something that you wanna pursue full time. And that is something that a lot of people also get lost in is like, you do not have to start a side hustle with the goal of quitting your job. You can start a side hustle because you wanna make an extra couple hundred bucks a week and that's gonna help take the pressure off of you financially. Very, 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 very important to understand this. So with that, Let's get into a couple of ways that you can start to figure out like what kind of side hustle ultimately is gonna be right for you. So first, I want you to start thinking about like what is the goal of your side hustle? I think, you know, for some people it could be do you wanna make a little bit of extra cash every week or do you wanna start a business where the goal is to leave your job and pursue it full time for your career? Again, it doesn't have to be you start a, you start a side hustle so that you can quit your job. It's very, very, very normal and okay to want to start a side hustle to just make some extra money. You have to ask yourself though, and be honest with yourself, what do you actually want? Do you like working corporate? A lot of people do, and I don't think there's any shame or any issue with that. I think culturally, we need to stop demonizing nine to five jobs because there are so many amazing benefits of working a nine to five. And the majority of people are able to work a nine to five and be very happy and very successful. And that's awesome. So 
think about what the goal is of working or creating a side hustle for you and try to eliminate any of the like peer pressure or anything that anybody else kind of thinks or puts on you when it comes to this kind of thing because when it when you want to be successful with your side hustle you have to make sure that you're pursuing something that you actually like and that you're actually going to like dedicate time to because if you start a side hustle with the sole intention of making money you're not it's going to it's not going to be something you want to do in your free time especially if you don't actually like it and that like how are you going to make money if you don't do it? And if you don't like it, you're not going to do it. So I think that's really important to remember. Um, I think another thing to ask yourself is like, are you looking to develop a new skill? Are you looking to express yourself and be creative? Because if that's the case, you can lean into a side hustle or learn a new skill that will help you create a side hustle. So ask yourself these kinds of questions. I'll summarize them. What's the goal of having a side hustle? Do you just want to make some extra cash every week or do you want to start a business that ultimately could help you leave your job? Are you looking for a way to express your creativity or learn a new skill? Those are all questions to ask yourself when figuring out what kind of side hustle you actually want to start. There's no right or wrong answer um, is another point that I want to make. And I also want to say with full like disclaimer, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. It's not for the faint of heart. It's very, very, very difficult. And if you are not a motivated, proactive person, you will not be successful as an entrepreneur. It's just the reality. And I'm going to hit it with you. I'm going to hit you with it really hard. Um, cause I think a lot of people, again, you see on social media, this glamorized version of working for yourself. I think a lot of people see fashion influencers who are like traveling all over Europe, taking pictures of themselves and getting free clothes and think that like, that's what they want to do. You see that, but that's not the reality of what it is. The reality of being any type of influencer, whether it's financial or career or whatever, or fashion, or like, you know, these people that you see mostly, um, the majority of stuff that they do is like sitting on their laptop, editing pictures, editing videos. Like it's not as glamorous as it looks. I would say like the traveling and taking pictures of yourself is probably 15% of your job. And the rest of your job is literally like administrative computer work. So working for yourself, not as glamorous as you think it is, but there are a lot of benefits as well. So when you think about, again, figuring out your side hustle, do you want to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to work for yourself? Do you want that pressure? Because when you have a nine to five job, like sure, there's pressure to get your work done and there's pressure coming from a manager or whatever, and you're confined to these specific hours, but you know you're getting paid. And when you're an entrepreneur, you don't know that. And it's a different type of pressure. So just choose your pressure, I think is really kind of the point that I want to make there. Get clear on what you actually want. Next, when figuring out your side hustle, Figure out what you are uniquely good at. I think this is catered more towards people who actually want to start a business and we'll get into like some maybe some different ideas if you're someone who doesn't want to start any type of business and you just want to pick up some extra cash every week without like honing a skill or something. We'll get there, so don't worry. Um, but if you are somebody who wants to start a side hustle and start a business and ultimately turn it into more, the focus should be to figure out what you are uniquely good at. It's likely that in your day-to-day -day life, you have friends, family, peers who come to you for a specific thing. And it could literally be anything. For me, it was always like budgeting and financial tips, hence where we are. I also always got questions from my friends around like navigating career decisions. I don't know why I was always that person. I think it's just because I feel like I'm able to look at things really objectively and I'm able to draw conclusions and problem solve really well. And so that translates into giving good advice. Um, but think about what you're actually good at. So maybe like at work, let's say you work in software engineering and you're really good at doing Python. And you get a lot of people outside of your team who message you or ask you or even friends and stuff that are like, I really want to learn how to code. Like, can you teach me a basic language? You're uniquely good at that. Maybe your skill is teaching beginners how to code. Like, 
Think about what you do in your job. Maybe you're a social media manager. Your unique skill there is learning how to price influencers. You can literally make an entire career off of how to price yourself as an influencer. The content creation or like the content creator economy, huge. And there are so many things within the creator economy that you can do that don't actually require you to be a creator. I did a video on this, a YouTube video on this. So I'll put a banner here if I remember um, on what video that is, or I'll link it in the show notes. But like within the creator economy, you can start a business that's being an assistant to creators, uh, being an online business manager. So basically being like their virtual assistant, managing their day-to-day schedule, tasks, etc., projects, planning, brand deals, whatever. You could be an editor, you could be a graphic designer, you could be somebody who takes photos or whatever. Like there are so many things that you can do within the creator economy to make a month, to make money and to build a business that don't involve you being in front of the camera or building an audience. So think about that. Like you probably already have a skill that can be monetized. You just haven't actually thought about it at all in a very critical way. So that's what you have to do. Um, I basically took my own unique skill and I ran with it on social media. But again, you don't have to have a social media presence to build a business. What I will say is that social media is free advertising. And so the reason why I think so many people find success on social media from building an audience and are able to monetize it is because of advertising reasons. So like, For me, I do brand deals, obviously. Um, I do a lot of them. And I do them on TikTok and I do them on Instagram. That wasn't the reason I started my pages though. Like I started my page as a way to just share what I was doing and to share my knowledge. And ultimately that kind of morphed into working with brands, but also creating my own products, my own templates, my own courses. And so how I leverage social media now is to educate, to inform, to inspire, to answer questions, to be a relatable figure for my audience. And as a result, I'm able to use my social media pages as a way to advertise the products and stuff that I sell. So like, if you wanna start a business, you have to make sales. That is like the key to making money, obviously, selling. That's a skill. And so if you're not going to use social media for advertising because you don't want to be on, you don't want to have a social media presence, that's okay. But you need to figure out what your platform for advertising is going to be. So let's say you want to start an agency where you do website design for influencers. That's great. How are you going to find clients? If you're not going to do social media showing like, oh, this is a website I designed. Here's a quick tip for how to code a website on Squarespace okay, you don't have to do that, but then how are you going to get clients? Are you in a cold email? Are you going to leverage your network? Like there are so many ways you can, but you just need to figure out what that's going to be for you. I don't have, unfortunately have any tips for that because that's not what I've done. Um, but there are ways to do it. And I, again, I do have a video on this, so I'll link it. Um, next, I want you to start thinking about like hobbies and stuff. So like, do you have any hobbies that you like to do? Maybe like you're really good at a sport or I don't know. Think about a hobby for me, for example, is I like to play tennis. So let's imagine I'm really good at tennis. Okay. What I could do is leverage my skill set playing tennis and teach tennis lessons to other, you know, young adults or young women in my vicinity who want to learn how to play tennis. Or I could get on TikTok and do lessons on how to swing the tennis racket correctly. Like There are, again, so many ways to build a side hustle based off of the hobbies that you have. I actually saw a girl on TikTok and she is a Pilates instructor and also loves golf. And so she created a whole business around how you can use Pilates and strength exercises that you learn in Pilates to improve your golf game. Genius. So niche, but so, so, so smart because that's a very specific skill set targeted at a very specific audience that is willing to pay her dollars for learning how to do that. Plus, because she's doing Pilates and golf, that opens up so many like opportunities for working with different kinds of brands. So you gotta think about this kind of stuff when you're thinking about what type of business you want to start. 
Um, I also think too, if maybe you like don't have any skills or you can't think of any skills, I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend learning something. So like use Skillshare. I did a partnership with Skillshare, so I may still have an active code. I think the code is break your budget. Um, I'll again, look it up and I'll put it in the show notes, but basically you can use Skillshare to learn how to do something. So let's say you want to learn how to do graphic design or copywriting or Excel. A lot of people ask me how to like, how I learned how to use Excel. Let's say you want to learn how to do those things so that you can ultimately monetize it or like make digital downloads or do something like that. Learn a new skill, take the time, invest in yourself and learn a new skill that ultimately you can monetize. There's no shame in doing that. So definitely explore that as an option. Um, okay. I'm doing a lot of talking, so I kind of want to speed this up a little bit. I have a set here. That's like, if you don't want to start a business or monetize a skill that you already have, if you're one of these people who just wants to earn a little bit of extra money, there are also a lot of ways that you can do that. Um, that don't require like a specific skill set. However, it probably does require having a mode of transportation. So like a car or a bike, depending on where you live. Um, a couple examples of that would be like Instacart shopping. So maybe three nights a week, you dedicate three hours to doing Instacart shopping or Uber or Lyft driving. So maybe one day of the weekend, you dedicate an afternoon to doing Ubers um, or maybe Rover or WAG. So like dog walking. So maybe three mornings a week or three nights a week, you dedicate two or three hours to walking as many dogs as you can, or one weekend a month where you do a dog babysitting and somebody who's going on vacation, you watch their dog. Think about different ways in your life or different kinds of apps like these too that you could use to make extra money. So let's say you like to drive. Uber could be a great option. Let's say you love grocery shopping. I love grocery shopping. Instacart could be a good option. Like there are so many things. And it's again, thinking about what fits into your lifestyle. Um, sorry for the interruption, but somebody is drilling outside of my apartment. So hopefully you can't hear that. Um, back to what I was saying though, is like when it comes to scheduling, think about how much time you have during the week to dedicate as well as activities that you may enjoy. For me, like I love to drive. If I had the right kind of car and a little bit more time, I would do Uber. My roommate actually does Uber Eats because she drives a hybrid. So like she doesn't care about gas and she has a ton of time because she's a teacher. So in the summer she has time off um, and she just has like all day to like tutor. That's another great option. Um, and also do like Instacart, DoorDash kinds of stuff. So think about what that looks like for you because there are a lot of different side hustles that you can pick up that don't require like a specific skill set. And a lot of people either look down on these or forget about them. There is no shame in driving for Uber. There is no shame in doing DoorDash or WAG or Rover. I think they're really great ways to make money. Another option is TaskRabbit. So this is one where you can actually make a lot of money because there are so many tasks that people don't want. So like, let's say it's assembling something or hanging something on somebody's wall or have, maybe you have a truck and you have a bed that you can actually use to transport stuff for people or like go pick up a piece of furniture or run errands for someone. So many options with TaskRabbit. So definitely explore that too. Um, if you are somebody who again, is trying to think about ideas for starting a business. I have a list here of ones that you could consider. First would be UGC content creation. So this doesn't require you to have a social media presence, but it does require you to be comfortable on camera or to record videos. Um, you can also do UGC content creation and not show your face. There are a lot of brands that do that. UGC stands for user generated content. Um, I highly recommend you follow JT Barnett. If you are somebody who wants to become a creator for a brand, he like matches brands with creators. So definitely check him out. Um, another idea would be to create digital downloads. One would be website design, graphic design, email marketing, or, um, creating email funnels. That's another one that's very lucrative, very much so needed for all brands and copywriting is another one. All of these you can do freelance. You just have to obviously have this skill set. So if you don't have that skill set, learn. Um, and if you do have that skill set, you have a skill that you can monetize as a freelancer or build your own business. So consider that. 
So that's phase one, and now we're gonna move into phase two, which are tips for how to balance a side hustle with a nine to five. So balancing a side hustle with a nine to five is very difficult, and it does require a lot of planning. This was basically my life for two and a half years, and so I feel like I've figured out a lot of ways to make it happen so that you don't lose your sanity. I definitely did feel burnout though, so like I think that is just a reality if, you are building a side hustle. It requires a lot of work if you actually want to monetize it. Um, and so if you're not willing to put in the time, then you're not going to be successful. And again, that's just the reality of trying to make money on the internet. So I think if you're overwhelmed, that was kind of how I was feeling. These tips are going to help you manage your time a little bit more efficiently so that you can prioritize your nine to five, obviously, but also so that you have the energy to prioritize your side hustle. So first, you wanna dedicate specific time every single week to your side hustle. So it doesn't matter if your side hustle is like building a business or if your side hustle is going to be something like Uber Eats or Instacart or something. You have to set specific time to actually doing it in order to see any type of progress. You can't treat your side hustle like a, like a hobby. You have to treat your side hustle like a business. So again, this is gonna look different for everybody and it really just depends on your schedule. So for me, initially, before I moved to California, I was working a nine to five and then after that, I would spend two hours every single night working on my side hustle. So that could be anything from creating content to answering emails. It was like, okay, every day for two, I'm gonna put two hours, um, four nights a week. I didn't do it on Fridays. And then I would dedicate like half of a weekend day um, at first to creating you know, whatever I needed to do. I think if you are doing like, again, like I, I don't want to call it a non-skilled side hustle, but like that is kind of what it is. Something that doesn't require you to develop or create a business. So the Instacarts, the Ubers, etc. It would be choosing two days of the week or three days of the week. Again, whatever works for your life. You know you better than I know you. It would be choosing time during the week, setting a schedule where let's say every Tuesday and every Thursday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. you're doing Uber or every Wednesday, every Friday, and every Saturday morning, you're doing three hours of Instacart shopping. Pick a schedule, set a schedule, and stick to it, and be consistent, because consistency is key here. So you actually have to like set time, dedicate time, put it on your calendar, and maintain it if you wanna see progress. So think about what's gonna work for your life, what makes sense for you, your productivity times, what's reasonable compared to like your nine to five. Maybe you work a job where during the week you work like 10 hour days and adding two more hours for your side hustle isn't gonna be reasonable. So that's okay, but then maybe you wanna dedicate one weekend day where you're doing it. So again, think about what works for your life. The next tip I have here is to start batching tasks. So this is gonna apply to people who wanna build a business. Um, think about what the different themes of tasks are that you have to do. I did a YouTube video on this. So again, that will also be linked. It's all about like how I manage my tasks during the week and plan out my week and my schedule. But if you have like a lot of things that you need to do that are unrelated to each other, start grouping things into categories. So what I like to do is give every day a theme. And I do a lot of different things as a content creator. I have like creative stuff that I have to do where I'm actually making content. I have filming that I have to do. I have writing days that I have to do. I have strategy, like business planning kind of things that I have to do. So many different things. I have administrative work. So like answering emails is a full-time job. Um, managing due dates and deadlines, full-time job. So if I don't like dedicate specific time to do that, I will be very, very, very disorganized and unresponsive. And so what I like to do and what I did do when I was balancing a, a nine to five with my business is during those two hours of the week or of the day that I was dedicating time to after my nine to five, every day would have a theme. So, and I remember this distinctly. Mondays were TikTok days. So I was spending two hours creating TikToks that I would be posting throughout the week. Tuesdays 
were Instagram days. So I was creating graphics and writing content um, and captions that were gonna be posted on my Instagram, showing up on my stories, answering DMs, like that's what I did on Tuesdays. Wednesdays were administrative catch-up days. So that's when I would like make sure all of my emails were done and make sure that I had due dates and I was planning like branded content and all of that kind of stuff. And then Thursdays were days where I thought about ways to build my business. So that could that for a while was creating the personal finance dashboard, the sales page, the email funnel, all of those kinds of things that were moving the needle forward in my business. So think about the different tasks that you have, group them into categories, and then give every day a theme and batch out all of your tasks. And you will be more productive, I can guarantee it. Because a lot of times when you're switching between different types of tasks, you end up getting into this like analysis paralysis kind of phase and you get less done. It also takes a lot of energy to like switch between various different things. This is applicable to your nine to five as well. If you are able to, I know not everybody's able to do this, but if you are able to like, categorize or theme out different portions of your day for dedicated types of stuff, um, you're going to be way more productive at work. So I highly recommend. Um, my next tip here is to focus on the one thing rule. So this was a tidbit that I actually got from my friend Emily. She did a podcast um, with me a couple of weeks ago or months ago now. And basically her advice, which I think is a really good advice, is to focus on one thing a day. So what is the one thing that's gonna move the needle forward? What is the one most important thing that you need to get done that day? And accomplish it, make sure you get it done. And even if you're not able to do two hours a day or you only have 25 minutes that you can dedicate to your side hustle that day, at least you're getting something done that's moving the needle forward and helping you build your business. I think that that is a really important lesson and rule to keep in mind. My next tip here is to figure out when your most productive time is. So for me, my most productive time is in the morning. So for a while, especially during COVID, I was spending time in the morning before my job working on my side hustle because that's when I'm most creative. That's when I'm most focused. And so that was when the most productive time was for me to do this actual work. So think about when you're most when you're most productive. For some, it is later in the evening. So maybe like you work your nine to five and then at like eight o'clock, you get back into your side hustle stuff. Or maybe you're like me and you're more productive in the morning. So setting seven to nine to do side hustle stuff and then logging into work and being done at five works better for you. Maybe you're better at lumping or like segmenting things throughout the day. So maybe it's easier for you to do an hour during your lunch break and then an hour right after work or an hour in the evening. What works for you? When are you most productive and lean into it and plan around that? Um, my next tip here is to accept the grind. This is a big one. If you like want to build a successful side hustle, you need to accept that it's literally having another full-time job. If you actually wanted to get off of the ground and be a full-time job or be a really great source of income. I know a lot of people who were like very blown away by the fact that I was able to quit my job and um, do my business full-time. Um, a lot of people at my like actual nine to five when I was leaving were like, oh, I have a side hustle too, but I've never been able to get it off the ground or match my income or come anywhere near matching my side hustle or matching my nine to five money. Like, how did you do it? The difference between me and those people is that my side hustle was a second full-time job. Like I was not treating it like a hobby. I was not treating it like, oh, when I feel like it, I'll do it. Or when somebody asks me for something, I'll do it. It was like, I am consistently being proactive, planning a week ahead, making sure I'm posting on Instagram and TikTok six or seven days a week. Like there was no gap. Um, and that's the difference between people who are able to build a successful business and people who aren't. It's being like grinding and getting the work done, even if you don't want to do it, even if you're tired, even if you have other things going on, you have to accept that it takes time, it takes effort, it takes dedication if you want to build a successful business. It will not come out of thin air. It will not happen if you don't take it seriously. And that's just the reality. Um, I think too, even when you think about like, 
you see people rise to fame really quickly on TikTok and everybody thinks it's so easy. The amount of videos that I see of people being like, I've posted on TikTok every day for two weeks. I haven't gone viral yet. I'm not, give, I'm giving up. That to me is like the most annoying thing I've ever heard in my entire life because so many people think that success in having a business and quitting your job is like an overnight thing, but really you just started paying attention when that actually happened. Like I, and I'll use myself as an example again, but like I was grinding for two and a half years. So two full years and then another six months where I was like at the point to quit my job where I didn't because I was just not emotionally and mentally ready to do it. But I was grinding and the amount of people that have found my page, like when I quit my job, and had questions or whatever, like, which is normal, but you're only seeing that, you're seeing that success as it happens. You're not seeing all of the work that's gone into it. I also don't share like all the stuff that I do. I think that that's another thing that people don't see on the internet when they see people on social media who have like grown a following or whatever, quit their job. You don't see 99% of the stuff that everybody's doing. You only see what they choose to show you and that makes it look a lot easier than what it actually is. But building a business, having a side hustle is a grind and having a nine to five and a side hustle is, uh, it's a lot. Um, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. My last tip here is to be productive, don't be busy. Um, I think the other thing too is like, when I say dedicate two hours of your day or whatever, I'm not saying just like set aside two hours where you're thinking about your business. Like use your time efficiently. So instead of like, just doing stuff because you think that's what's going to be helpful like set goals make a task list and get organized and make sure that what you're doing is actually helping you build a business and not just keeping you busy so that you feel like you're building a side hustle even when you're not doing anything to actually like build a business i think like the big tip with this is to set goals for your side hustle and then work backwards and break them down this is why i really like um, the own your career template, which I, you know, I'll plug shamelessly here, but I built that for my corporate job. And it was to like set goals, like career goals for myself, being proactive, thinking ahead. And so that I could kind of take things backwards and break them down into smaller goals that I could work towards that would ultimately get me to that bigger goal. And this applies to your business. I actually use the own your career template for my own business planning. It's where I set my business goals and like strategize, break your budget and think about new income ideas and all of that kind of stuff. And so if you have a side hustle, I would recommend picking up the own your career template and kind of integrating your nine to five goals and your side hustle goals all in one place. Or, you know, you can copy it over and have two versions of it if you've already bought it. So that I think is a really good tip always linked below. I don't have a discount code for that because it's only 20 bucks, but I do have a discount code for the personal finance dashboard. I'll take this as an opportunity to use it. You can use the code podcast one for $10 off the PFD. As always, it's always in my show notes. Um, and it's for podcast listeners only. I don't share it anywhere else. So those are my tips for balancing a nine to five and a side hustle. And now we'll move into phase three here, which is figuring out when it's time to leave a job to pursue your side hustle. So the reason why I want to incorporate this as part of this episode is because I did receive a question a couple of weeks ago um, from somebody who said, it was during my like weekly Q and A and she was like, I have $20,000 saved up. Should I quit my job and start a business? And this really got me thinking because my initial answer to that question is no. I don't think that that's a smart idea, but again, I think it's very situational. Um, so I think it's important to go through all of the things that you should do to financially prepare to quit your job. I do have a whole podcast episode about this, so I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail because you can just go listen to that one. But here are a couple of quick things from high level. First is that before you even consider quitting your job to pursue your side hustle or to start a business um, or you know go head first into your business is you need to make sure you've established some type of recurring income. It doesn't necessarily need to be enough income to replace your nine to five, but it does need to be something. You, because 
if you aren't making sales, if you're not making money, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. I think that's a really important distinction to keep in mind. So if you don't have any money coming in, you should not be leaving your nine to five. I think that that is a very financially irresponsible thing to do, even if you have savings, because those savings will drain and you're going to get stressed. And then your business no longer is fun. And I think that's a big also problem that a lot of people will run into if you just quit your job prematurely before you have income coming in. If you are not having a good time, if you do not enjoy what you're doing in your business because you are in financial duress or you're under financial strain, you won't be successful. So I think the reason why building a side hustle while you have a nine to five is so strategic is because it takes the income pressure off and it allows you to make clear level-headed decisions for your business without money or income or revenue being the only force there. I think too, when you're creating, let's say you're creating an online business, it takes a long time to build a following and it takes a long time to build trust to a point where people will buy something from you. It took me two years and that's, you have to create, you know, consistent content. You have to set an expectation for yourself that people are going to come to your page and they expect a certain something from you. And it takes time to learn how to deliver that on a consistent schedule. So if you like have money saved, sure, to pay your bills, but you don't have any additional money coming in and you're not seeing progress, you're going to start making decisions that are emotional and that are coming from a place of stress. And that is not going to like do you any favors. So I wouldn't recommend um, quitting your job before you've established a degree of recurring income. Next is you want to make sure that you have work or business that you can depend on for two to three months in advance. So when I left my job, I had already secured, I want to say two or three months worth of brand deals and income that I knew I was going to get, even if I didn't sell a single template, um, which was not going to happen. Like I sell my template regularly. I have a pretty consistent benchmark of what I'll make every month off of that at this point. And um, that is more than what I was making in my nine to five job. And then I also had these brand deals lined up. So make sure that you have income that's coming in over the first couple of months of when you quit your job again, because it's going to take the pressure off. And if you don't have that, you're going to be making poor decisions. Number three is that you have both a business and a personal emergency fund. So a personal emergency fund when you are working for yourself is six months of expenses. It's not three. If you have a corporate job, it's three. If you don't have a corporate job and you're working for yourself, it's six because your income when you work for yourself or as an entrepreneur is not as consistent. It's much harder to plan. And so you want to make sure you have fallback in case you have a low month. I think also when it comes to having a business emergency fund, this means that you have money to cover any surprise expenses or if you need to buy a piece of software or whatever. For me, it's like I like to make sure I have money in my business account. My business account doesn't go below a certain threshold. And that's so like if I have a payment that comes in late or a brand doesn't pay me on time or there's some type of issue or I ha just have a low month, I still have money to pay my bills for my business and also make sure that I'm not like missing due dates or billing dates for software that I have. And I have a video editor, so I need to make sure that I have money to pay him. Like it's just stuff like that. You need to have a business emergency fund to fall back on, especially too, if like it's tax season and you need to pay your taxes. Very important that you have an emergency fund, personal and business before you quit. And then number four is that you've done your research and you've figured out how your expenses are going to change once you've left your job. This is a huge one because when you work a corporate job, you are given benefits. So that's a 401k, sometimes a 401k match. You're paying for health insurance. Like these are things that when you leave, you don't get anymore. There are no benefits when you work for yourself. Same with PTO. I don't get PTO. Time off. If I don't work, I'm not making money. So like those are the things that you have to think about and plan for. So for me, before I even considered quitting my job, 
I spent time doing research to understand what I would be paying in health insurance if I wanted to have a comparable plan. I spent time going through the California health insurance marketplace to go through all of my different options and understand what that impact would be and how much more I'd be paying monthly compared to what I was doing at my job. I also worked with an accountant to understand what my options were for retirement planning based on how my business is structured to make sure that I'm optimizing saving for retirement and also my tax burden and what am I like there's just a lot of things you got to think about so if you're not thinking about those things already you're not ready to quit your job so I think the big takeaways from this section is that you want to make sure you have recurring monthly income already established at least two to three months in advance because that gives you a buffer to figure out how you're going to secure the next two to three months you want to make sure that you have an emergency fund and then you want to make sure that you've done your research to understand how your expenses will change when you're not working your nine to five. Um, okay, so those are the three phases. And now we're going to move into some Q&A. So like I said, I have a couple of questions on here that you guys asked. And I'm going to try to do this in like five or so minutes because I'm looking at my timer and this is a long one. So first, the first question is, should you have a plan before you start a side hustle or should you just start and figure things out? In my opinion, I think you should have an idea of what you want to do. And hopefully during this episode, you've kind of got the wheels turning. There have been some thought starters to think about what you want to do to start your side hustle. But I don't think you should live in this like period of thinking and analyzing for more than a couple of days. Like if you have an idea, you should act on it and just start because you learn so much more by doing than you do by consuming. So you can listen to all my stuff, you can read all of the books, you can do all of the research, you can spend all your time creating a logo, whatever. None of that matters. You need, I don't have a logo. Um, it's so funny because I was working with my editor. I was like, oh, I'd love to have an animated logo or something to do as an intro of my video. And he was like, well, do you have a logo? No, I've never needed one. It's not important or it's not the most important for starting a business. So you really want to like do and act and take messy action and be okay with like being a little uncomfortable or thinking that people are judging you. You'll get over it. They'll get over it. Nobody cares as much as you do and try because you will learn way more when you're doing than you will by just like consuming and also know that as you learn, what you think you want or what your initial plans were could change and evolve. Like when I think back to what Break Your Budget was in 2019 when I started this, almost a year ago, it's July 14th, I'm pretty sure I started Break Your Budget on this time three years ago, which is crazy. Um, but when I think back to what Break Your Budget was then versus what it is now, it's like completely different. And how I look at it and how I approach things is so different. So you learn a lot by doing. So I don't think you should spend a lot of time in the like strategizing, planning, organizing phase. You should spend way more time doing. And then as things start to work and you see what hits, what doesn't hit, what you like, what you don't like, then you can kind of iterate from there. Number two, if you're doing freelance work, should you work for free to get a few clients? Um, so my opinion on this is I think it is okay right off the get-go to do some work for free if you're having a really hard time getting clients. Um, I think the reason why is because it allows you to create a portfolio to get work examples and work experience without the pressure of delivering on a specific timeline or for a specific rate. And once you have that experience under your belt and you have examples, it's way easier to get clients because you can show them like testimonials. So I think that that's really important. The flip side of that though, is that working for free is like not really a sustainable thing. So if you are gonna take clients for free, I would recommend you only do one or two and you set the expectation with them. That's like, okay, I'm gonna take this project on for free. This is the timeline that works for me. And in exchange for this, 
You're going to give me a testimonial. You're going to provide me feedback on what you liked, what you didn't like, so that I can use that information to help get paid clients. Like you just need to make sure you set an expectation there that sure, maybe they're not paying you money, but they're giving you value in a different way that's going to help you make money. That's really important if you're going to take free clients. But I wouldn't take too many of them because you really shouldn't be working for free. Like your time is valuable. And you should approach your business with that same mindset. And also, if you're good at what you do and you have a skill set, like you deserve to be paid for it, whether you've had a client or not. So um, that's my opinion there. I think you kind of really need to make that judgment call on your own. Um, another person said, the market seems so saturated in everything. How do I find a niche? Well, first you need to focus on what you're uniquely good at, and then you need to get over the fact that you think the market is saturated, but it's not. You have to remember that there are a billion people on TikTok. Like, you will find your 100K. Like, I think that that's really important to remember. There are so many people out there, and nothing is too saturated. And you, the way that you do something in your voice is what makes you unique. And the people that align with what you're saying, the way that you say it, are going to be your audience. So, like, there are so many people out there giving personal finance tips. But I'm the only one who gives personal finance and career tips with my voice, with my approach. And that is what people come to me for. They like how I say things, the way that I approach things, the content that I put out compared to different ones. And other personal finance people create different types of content that attracts people that are interested in their voice. So I think that's like really important to remember. And also being making sure you remember how many people are out there on social media. Like, there are so many people and you'll find yours if you're putting out content that you want to consume. Um, okay, I think I'm going to answer one more. Mm, there are a couple more actually here that I'm going to do. The first is how much to invest into a side hustle. I would invest whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I think to start a side hustle and to start a business, you don't have to have any money. You can do it for free. Um, you can do Instagram, TikTok, they're both free. YouTube is free. Although sometimes you do need equipment. That being said, I think the iPhone era is officially here and that iPhone videos and iPhone vlogs are just as high quality and acceptable as filming on a normal camera. So if you want to start a social media page or something, or you want to do digital downloads or whatever online, you don't need to invest any money. However, you may need to invest in like a class or a Skillshare membership or something, just because sometimes you need to learn. Um, and learning how to build a business and learning like what's important and what isn't is really important. I also think too, when you pay for something, you're way more likely to show up. That's why my products are priced the way they are, because if you have skin in the game and you're paying, let's say $60, $50, if you listen to this podcast, for the personal finance dashboard, you want to get your money's worth. Damn right you're going to show up and do your monthly money review and your weekly review because you paid 50 bucks for it. So sometimes investing is the best way to hold yourself accountable. The next question here is how to understand contracts and make sure that clients pay and manage their expectations. This is a hard one and I still haven't figured out like the right answer or the right way to do this. I'm sure there is somebody out there who knows way more about contracts than I do. But basically I make sure that the deliverables that I've agreed to are clearly outlined in the contract. I make sure that the payment terms are clearly outlined in the contract. There are clauses too when I used to work with clients that kind of release all liabilities. So I would definitely recommend making sure that if you are somebody who works with a client you have that clause i actually bought like a contract from a lawyer that's like worked specifically in my niche you can just google it um how to buy a contract from someone that you can use or customize for whatever specific thing that you're doing same with terms and conditions like i have terms and conditions on my teachable website that when you click yes okay i agree to pay you are agreeing to those terms and conditions it basically relinquishes the liability from me if you have an issue um which you know i've knock on wood have not had any problems but you never know i think if you were to invest in anything a contract is probably in like a legalese is probably the most important to invest in um, just because 
it costs a lot more to go to court than it does to spend a couple hundred bucks on an accurate and correct contract one time that you can then reuse and adjust based on what you're doing. For me, I think too, the other piece is like, if I'm working with brands and stuff, I make sure that there's no, there's one thing it's called perpetuity or like perpetual rights or something. I make sure that's not in there, but I definitely still have a lot to learn about brand contracts so that I'm not getting taken advantage of. Um, but yeah, I think the contract thing is definitely a little bit more difficult to navigate. You just kind of have to do some research and teach yourself because I have not found a good resource. If you have any recs, let me know. But I haven't found a good resource for like contract, like a content creator or someone online who explains these things in a way that makes sense. So if you know anybody, send them to me. Um, okay, I think I'm going to do one more question and okay this question is how to know when to push through or reassess and change side hustles i think that there are a few ways to gauge this first is do you like what you're doing because i think you'll be successful in your side hustle if you are passionate about it and if you like what you're doing because you'll be way more excited to spend time on it Again, all of the people that you see that are super successful are so incredibly passionate about what they're doing. So if you don't like the side hustle that you're working on, you're not gonna be motivated to do it. It's not gonna work out. And at that point, obviously you'd wanna reassess. I think the other piece too is like, if you're doing a side hustle that you're struggling to monetize, then again, it's not really a business, it's a hobby. So think about, make sure when you choose a side hustle, you can think about various ways to monetize it. Like. Again, I'll go back to the content creation, digital creator economy kind of side hustle that is really popular right now. The reason why so many people have pursued this is because there are so many ways to make money doing it. And you can choose one way or you can leverage a variety of ways. But like you can make money working with brands, you can make money on YouTube through AdSense, you can make money doing a podcast. Disclaimer, I don't make any money on my podcast because I don't advertise on my podcast. Um, but if you do advertise on your podcast, then you know you can make money based off of downloads. Um, you can also sell like personal consultations or you can sell digital products. So like think about ways if you're struggling to monetize, that is when I would reconsider your side hustle or start to shift. I think the big thing is making sure that you actually enjoy it because if you don't, again, like what you're doing, you're not gonna be successful. Um, okay. That is all the questions I'm going to answer. I hope that this episode was helpful for you because I do get a lot of questions about side hustles and I know that it can be really hard to figure out what to do. I think my best advice is to make sure that your side hustle is something that you like because if you like it and you're passionate about it, you will find ways to grow, you will find ways to monetize it, but if you don't like it, you're not gonna put in the time, you're not gonna commit to it, it's not gonna pan. And so that's my best advice. Like I obviously, I love talking about money, I love talking about budgeting, I love talking about career, that's actually something I've recently learned about myself through doing this, is I love giving career advice. Um, and I feel like I learned a lot in my career to put me in a position where I have perspective to give career advice. I'm not an expert on everything. I don't claim to be, but I do have a lot of experience doing a lot of different things and I've learned so much and I have a, I think, unique perspective and approach to stuff where I give a lot of tough love, I say things how they are and that resonates with people. So figure out what you're passionate about, lean into it, find your unique voice and figure it out as you go. Like that is really, you learn as you do. I'm a doer. I like to learn as I go. I like to be disciplined and you'll eventually get there, but you have to remember it takes time, it takes consistency. There's no such thing as overnight success. There's no such thing as becoming rich really fast. I think TikTok has sort of created that illusion and it's just simply not real. You can blow up on TikTok and not make any money. So I think that's also really important. It's not about followers. It's not about, you know, 15 seconds of fame. It's about consistent value and that's what people want. They don't want useless content anymore. The content needs to entertain, it needs to educate, it needs to provide some type of value. So 
that's that. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. And as always, if you like this podcast, leave me a review. If you've made it this far, again, I'll give you the reminder. You can get $10 off the personal finance dashboard using the code podcast one, and I will catch you in the next one.